Hi everybody, welcome back and today I've got my Q&A video. So <laughs> this video was actually filmed whew, right after I posted it on my Instagram and what happened was my battery died and then I had to film another video but I didn't have my charger with me. So a week passed and I got super busy with work and then I fell sick and I was traveling and oh my gosh, it is a month late. <laughs> so I am so sorry, a thousand apologies for everyone who has posted questions on my Instagram and also giving me, you know, messages for it because yeah, I've got all your questions and it is not answered. So that's really bad on me. So now I'm going to do it today. I hope you guys um, don't mind. I am answering them a little bit late, but better late than never. First question from the dot CFF. What happened to your Chanel Trendy CC? I can't recall if you addressed this already, but the bag has been on the back of my mind and it's on my vision board lately. So this question was also um, cheered on by I am Rufa A. So if you ever watched, I actually posted a regret video and I sold my Trendy CC. I sold it mainly because I was super afraid I don't know why, but I was super afraid of lambskin. I got quite affected by a lot of reviews of why lambskin is so delicate and all. And it became a bag that I didn't use. I used once or twice, I think maybe less than five times. And it just sat in my cupboard. So I couldn't take it. I was so afraid, so I sold it. And now fast forward to today, or maybe a few months ago, I am obsessed with lambskin right now. I just bought my lambskin urban spirit backpack and it's not as delicate as people say it is. Obviously, it is a luxury bag with soft leather. You have to be more mindful of your fingernails and sharp corners. But if you treat it well, actually lambskin is not so bad. So I sold it and I have a major seller's regret, okay, major. Next, next one, Jen LYJ, two questions. First, what are your thoughts on the Loewe Buzzle Bag worth the price tag? And in regards to your love bracelet, does the motif screw lines in the rest of the motif? So let me answer your second one. So it does not, let me just show you. As you can see, the screws do not line up with the motifs. It really depends on how you first insert the screw in and turn it. I don't know. Um, if it differs from the new system, oh, excuse me, uh, whereby the screw is intact with the bracelet, like my screws, oh, my screws, <laughs> they pop out entirely. And I don't know whether that's different from the new system, but the ones, this is the older design, and they don't um, line up with the rest of the motifs. It's not, I don't think it's possible because it really depends on where you first, you know, put the screw in and start to turn. And I don't turn them like super, super tight but tight enough that um, they don't you know, unwind themselves. Your other question is, what do I think about the Loewe puzzle bag? I actually quite like it. I featured it in one of my videos as well as a very understated uh, work bag. And I like the fact that uh, you can kind of fold it, kind of shape it in the way you want because it's like a puzzle. As for the price, I haven't actually really gone into um, checking it out, but I do know they cost a, above 3,000 Singapore dollars. I personally think for that price, uh, for a luxury bag that is with um, good leather and is pretty well made, understated, and you can use it for like work and travel, I think for that price is reasonable. It's definitely not a cheaper bag. Like if you're looking for a 2000 range bag, then Loewe is not uh, actually really that cheap. They do emphasize on the material and the, the their craftsmanship. So if you're, if you're willing to pay for that, then definitely I think it's an okay price. It's not like in the Chanel range, right? And even on the LV, uh, LV prices nowadays, if you compare it, LV is selling canvas for that kind of prices. You can get a full leather bag um, at Loewe. So, uh, if you look at it and you compare it that way, I do think it's actually quite a reasonable uh, price bag. And Jane, what do you think of Chloe? Do you find their pieces too trendy? And would you ever buy a Gucci times Doraemon piece if they ever made a collection? Okay, to be honest, I am not a real fan of Chloe, um, mainly because I do find their pieces to be more jewelry-like. Like they're just loads of hardware and it's just not a bag that I uh, am gravitate towards. They are definitely more dressier pieces, so I am not a fan of that. I don't use those pieces, but if you are looking for a beautiful bag, like a beautiful 
just just like eye catching back. Then I think Chloe does uh, do it pretty well. Like the one that's really famous, the, the one that goes like this with the Chloe. Is it the Chloe Drew bag? The one that has a lock. I, I can't remember the name. That is beautiful. My uh, sister in law has it, and the first time she carried it, I was like, wow, that's really beautiful. The hardware, the glittery chain, and all that, I think it's stunning. But it's not a bag that grab I I'm attracted to. Like, I'm like, oh, I will spend my money on because. Yeah, I don't think I'll find use for it. The other thing about it is it's heavy. So I don't know about the rest of uh, Chloe's bags, but I did find the one that she had was heavy, even though it wasn't like loads of hardware. It was just like the lock, the, the handles, but the chain, but the bag itself was quite heavy. But anyway, I don't think their pieces are really that trendy. I think they're more like jewelry pieces. They are more uh, dressy pieces. Not trendy, just dressy. That's that's how I see Chloe, um, some of the bags that I am aware of. As for Gucci times Doraemon, to be honest, I wouldn't. Mainly because I know they will jack up the price to times 100. <laughs> it will be super expensive. I love Doraemon. I think it's a fun thing to have, something affordable, something cute and you know it's just something that I'm not gonna spend my you know life savings on. I personally don't think I would spend on a collaboration with a luxury house because I know the prices would be ridiculous. I would rather spend you know Doraemon times Uniqlo or Doraemon times H&M. I think those prices would be more in my wallet range and something that I, you know, can just wear for fun and don't worry so much about and just be heartache if it gets lost or stolen or spoiled. Yeah, so I don't think so. Unless Gucci makes it affordable, which I doubt they will. They're gonna milk it. Snape HBP, I know you cut your hair short to support your friend who's battling cancer. How is she doing? So I think I had two questions on this. And she's doing very well. Thank you for asking. Yes, um, hair has grown out. So I think since my last update, she was doing um, chemo, I think, yeah, chemo. And so she finished the chemo, she's also done her surgery, and then she's finished her radiation, and now it's, you know, it's a road to recovery. But, you know, it is, um, an, I would say, a long journey, because you never really know if you are 100%, right? So it's, it's I think, quarterly monitoring and medication, Long story short, she is doing much better. So her hair dropped off and she was bald for a long time. But after radiation, I think the last uh, three weeks that I saw her, so I've been traveling and all, uh, her hair has grown back. It's like like stubbles. Well, it's more than stubbles actually. It's like it's like an inch. So I can see that it's you know her body is you know when you're young, your body recovers, your body fights back. So you know she's doing very well and uh, we're all really happy. Kira M M. How do you like your short hair? I think you look beautiful, especially with the red lips. So I did wear a red lipstick today. And may I ask how your friend is? So I answered that already. And I do like the short hair. I like um, looking a little bit different from a lot of girls. Meaning like, you know, most girls have long hair or they have like bob or everything. But having like such short hair do turn heads. People are like, oh, look, because it's, it's really short. And especially when I start to spike it up and, you know, have some color. Uh, it, it, it does stand out, you know, you look a little bit different from the rest of the world. <laughs> and I'm not saying like, you know, most people have long hair. It's just that long hair, now that I have short hair, is, it's functional. It's functional, it's, it's convenient, it's uh, definitely less high maintenance. It's just tied up, you don't have to worry about the day. But with short hair, it's... It's blow drying, it's gel, it's shower in the morning, shower in the evening, it's cleaning, it's it's you know, it's 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 work. So yeah, now I know why guys say short hair is not as easy and we always say, Oh short hair is easy, you can just wash your hair really fast, you know. But actually that is work. <laughs> that is work. Gelling it, styling it and all that that yeah, so I I feel you guys now, <laughs> I feel you guys. Badaria Berlian, hi Kat, have you heard about the news regarding the authentic Chanel boutique in KL selling fake Chanel goods? What is your view on this? So I have not actually heard about this. I should Google it. I think it is really scary to hear that um, Chanel boutique is actually selling fake goods. I don't know whether this is fake news, but I'll definitely Google it out and yeah, 
if it is true, I think Chanel needs to really do something about their security. <laughs> like, how does fake goods get into the store? Most likely, it's going to be an insider job. So anyway, I will Google it. Love Lux Eat. Fine off fashion jewelry. What is your take on fast fashion? I'm okay for both fine and uh, what do you call it? Fashion jewelry. I love my Chanel fashion jewelry. But lately, I have not been purchasing. It's because they are getting so expensive. And I'm feeling like spending the same amount of money and buying real gold. Not necessarily fine jewelry, but real real metals, right? Because I walked into Pokong, which is a local uh, jeweler in Malaysia, and there was this heavy, like, ugly, chunky gold chain, 24 or 22 karat gold. And it cost the same amount of money um, for me to buy a necklace, jewelry, fashion jewelry from Chanel. So that just puts it into perspective, like, oh my gosh, I am spending unnecessary money for items that are just of no value, just beautiful fashion, um, and I should be spending it on real things. So yeah, just lately I have not been buying, but I have still been looking. They are beautiful. And fine jewelry, jewelry like let's say like Cartier and all, is definitely be paying majority for the brand and for the design and all that, but it's really, um, not worth the metal that you're buying it at. So my take is, you know, have a balance. It's okay to enjoy some fashion items. Just don't overdo it. Like I, I did overdo it a little bit with the earrings and all, so I'm trying to cut back. And even with fine jewelry, <laughs> that's hard to say. Even with fine jewelry, uh, I think pick the ones that really sings to you because luxury brands find jewelry i think uh is priced a little bit ridiculously i think they are pricing a margin way too high so if you really love like fine jewelry actually go to a real jeweler like you know i i think um they do make Stunning pieces as well. Sedge7979. Any thoughts on the Sun Reef bag? I think I'm pronouncing it right. To be honest, I don't like them. They are really ugly and large and not attractive. I know people have been showing them and saying that they look very functional, but I think a simpler looking and less bulky bag is also just as functional. They do not look nice. I I don't know even if they're beautiful models promoting them, they are so boxy and just clunky. So no, I don't like them. Andre's World. Do you ever get fed up of all the traveling? There are times I do, but I'm traveling mainly for work. Like where I am, it's mainly for work. And I know eventually I, yeah, I will go back home. So at the moment, not really. I'm just seeing this as just, you know, something that I have to do. But eventually I know I will settle, <laughs> settle down and and that's it. That's that's when I know I'll be fed up. So right now, uh, it's still okay. Kimion92, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Do you have to remove your love bracelet at the airport or is it an urban legend? I am actually saving for the white gold one and I'm quite concerned about that because like you, I travel a lot. And I have not been asked uh, to remove this bracelet. It has beeped in multiple airports and depending on the scanner or machine, it does show up as metal. So uh, yeah, they've asked me to, you know, like put up my hands and just uh, take the manual scanner and just scan and they can see that they're beeping. There was this one security lady in Malaysia that said, oh, take that off. And I told her I can't, it's screwed. And she just left it. You know, she did, they didn't bother to ask me to, oh, why, where's your screwdriver and all that. They just accept that it's there. I think it's also the fact that it is jewelry and, you know, we've got, you know, earrings on our ears and we've got all kinds of jewelry on our body. They can't be asking us to take off every single piece. It'll just hold up um, the lines. Uh, usually it beeps and I just go through the scanner. You know, I, I kind of like know it already. In fact, when I go through the scanner and if it doesn't beep, I'm going like, oh, it didn't, it didn't catch it. So 
So right now, that's my mentality with the love bracelet on my hand. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Tu Che Che. Considering getting a Gabrielle, but heard it's quite heavy due to the chains. How heavy is the weight of your medium Gabby bag? So I actually um, did a video comparing, comparing the Gab, uh, Gabby bag and my Chanel Jumbo. I'll link it up here and you can check it out. They are actually uh, pretty much the same weight. They are not very different. So if you have tried the Chanel Jumbo in caviar leather, it is about the same weight. So that's about a kilo, uh, a little bit more than a kilo. So it's, it's not that heavy. You do get used to the weight and having the chains being uh, so many they actually distribute i feel like they distribute the weight a little bit better and if you can wear it like a v shape like that or wear the whole thing cross body actually it's much more comfortable than the chanel uh, jumbo bag achitami how's your mom doing with her health so thank you for asking she is doing very well um it's been more than a year and a half since her diagnosis. So she is, yeah, she's, you know, she's recovered uh, from her surgery. She's back to eating. So she's put on weight as well. Uh, and her, yeah, her appetite is back. She's moving around. So she's more active. She's going to her morning walks and her morning exercises with her friends. Yeah, she is doing much better. But I do notice, you know, uh, changes in just her well-being as before the surgery and before the diagnosis is that you know she's a little bit you know she it's a little bit ha harder for her to suddenly get up and i wonder whether that's because of the medication that she's on and she's just just like a tad bit slower um in things that she do and she's getting tired a little bit more but i also do think that uh, comes with age she is um 70 Four? I think she's 74, <laughs> 73 or 74. So she is definitely um, more old. She's older. And with that, you know, traumatic period of a time, I, I think it does take a toll on her. But overall, she is still very healthy and she's getting stronger by the day. Um, but there are these small things that I do notice uh, as I compare it to uh, the past year and a half. Alex? Hi Kat, any thoughts on the Miss Dior bag? Also, you might have said something, but what do you think about the saddlebag? So let's answer the saddlebag first. I have mentioned it in a few of my Save My Money videos. It is a bag that I will not get because I think it looks like a body part. It looks like liver. So I know a lot of people rock it, but it just doesn't appeal to me. So sorry, no. As for the Miss Dior bag, I really like it. I have seen two bags that are kind of like on my radar, which is the the one in grey and also the black patent one. I have put a poll on my Insta story once and a lot of people uh, chose the grey, pearl grey, mini uh, Miss Dior bag. And I, I think it is a more practical piece, but I saw this lady carry the patent leather black version in Sydney and it's stunning. Okay, it's stunning. So... I love it. Okay, I love that bag. Last question from Gaia Lassi. Do you actually think you will continue your no buy until the end? Can't decide if I admire you or not. LOL. I will uh, continue this no buy until end of the year. And it's not really a no buy 100%. It is more of a regulated no buy year. Meaning I have my exceptions uh, with clothing, with makeup and with my luxury things. I have like five luxury items that I am planning to get this year and I've already achieved one of it which is the Urban Spirit Backpack and in my entire year I'm allowed one exception. Okay, one exception to my five items. So meaning I can buy actually six items, up to six items. So the exception is something that is unique in the year that you know, it can just pop out and you know, in one year, there are so many collections, there are so many capsule collections, there are so many new releases and also this one piece has to really make my heart sing. So, so far I have a few things that have made my heart sing but because I know I've only allowed one beside the five, I have managed to stay strong <laughs> which I'm really proud of myself for doing that. So yeah, I, I am going to continue this until the end of the year, I'm going to try my best to stick to my rules. Um, luxury, I think it's not so difficult. Clothing as well is not so hard. But makeup and skincare is really difficult because new releases come out every day. Okay, every day, every week, every month. 
and I love trying out new things so this has been a struggle and I think if you watch my monthly confession videos you can see that I struggle with this uh, category I always end up buying something small but I feel uh, what has happened is I am more mindful of it meaning because I know I have to confess at the end of the month I am more likely not to buy excessively like if I didn't have this mindset I would probably be like oh let's try it out let's try it out buy this concealer buy. but you know I managed to control I would say 50% of it so far and you know I'm still hitting the wall okay I'm still hitting the wall I'm still falling off the bandwagon on this category but I think it's much better um, than before whereby I'm just straight on buying and I just don't care so there were like loads of concealers um, in the beginning of the year like Tarte came out with like a lot of it in Malaysia and then um, Fenty Beauty as all. Well. but if I didn't control myself I would have bought it okay I would have bought the Beauty Blender Conceal uh, Foundation as well and all kinds of things that just recently popped out so having a bit of uh, rules to my um, shopping habit is really useful so yeah I'm gonna try and do end of the year all right so those are the questions uh, from my last Q&A I think I missed out some questions especially those that answered it through my insta stories I tried to look for it <laughs> on my Instagram but I think over the past few weeks some of you have started to talk to me and that particular question got lost in the translate like lost at the top so I can't actually find them anymore so I'm so so sorry I will do better in my next q and I promise <laughs> I will film it immediately after and not wait so long like oh my gosh what did I do anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this session till my next one you guys take care and I'll see you in my next video